Hey everyone, Brian Beeler here alongside Kevin O'Brien at the Storage View Lab, and today we have a partially dissected NetApp C190 uh, review to talk about. In the C190, the C stands for what? That I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know either. It might stand for channel because it's a channel play, so maybe it's Probably, a, yeah. Yeah, it's a channel 190. Anyway, it's a 2U chassis, standard sort of entry storage form factor, dual controller, Active, active, right? So you've got some redundancy there on the controller side. A lot of redundancy, not just some, a lot of redundancy. You've got maximum redundancy on the controller side. And in this case, it's a 24 bay system. So if we move the uh, bezel over, you would see uh, that it's populated. Ours is uh, the all flash uh, configuration with 960 SSDs. Now NetApp has done a number of things to keep this cost effective and really simple. And one thing they've done is standardized on this part for the SSD, just to make it easier for them to only have to, to qual and support one drive there. Uh, and it's available, the C190, in a number of configurations, 8, 16, 24, I think. And at 24 drives across, that's a an effective capacity of about 55 terabytes, assuming roughly a three to one data reduction model. Uh, so for the edge use cases, SMBs, uh, that this is designed for, there's a lot of capacity. Now on the downside, it doesn't have shelf expansion. Yeah, although with, as we've seen, depending on how you're um, leveraging these things, you might be running out of I.O. as you increase additional drives. So you want, usually in those platforms, you want to be able to scale out with something a little bit faster. And that's where uh, the larger models, you go to the A3 series or a, uh, like A7, A8 series, there's a lot of power behind those controllers. On these, they're really designed to fit the, um, the initial deployment size. You could expand capacity, but performance are easy to top out with the uh, 24 uh, drive size. But you're still getting on tap underneath. So we're running uh, 9.7 on this one, but it'll support future versions as well. And you're getting, like I said, the redundant dual controller setup. And the controllers are pretty beefy for an entry storage product. Yeah, I mean, you can get this in either a... Um, quad uh, RJ45 10 gig uh, platform or in this we have uh, converged adapters so these can operate as either Ethernet or fiber channel we actually have the f uh, fiber channel in these so right. we get uh, quad uh, 16 gig ports per controller and there's a lot of fun stuff here I mean the airflow that you have through this platform is very nice and you uh, look if you look at this side there's a battery backup in each controller so if right. this unit loses power it's able to flush everything in flight off to um, stack flash so you don't lose any data you're not going to find that on a lot of the platforms out there they might be able to have um, like a DRAM buffer for a RAID card for example mm -hmm. but they're not able to flush everything out into a uh, non-volatile uh, storage media and so at a price point where this comes in at sub 20k to start and maybe even more aggressively depending on what your uh, channel partner can offer you NetApp is gaining a lot of new customers. In fact, the word that we've heard is as many as half of the consumers of the C190 are net new NetApp customers. Now, that's a big deal for NetApp because while they're very successful at the high end in the enterprise, they've had the A200 series, of which we still run, and they've got some other products in that in that well, A series family. There's always a lot of concern where everyone looks at like, hey, I have X number of dollars to spend. Wait, oh, I couldn't spend it on a NetApp or another vendor because, because they, they have think to be... it's too expensive, yeah. right? And that's another good point is that in a space that's dominated by a lot of um, you know low cost NAS solutions, having something like this available at a price point that's affordable has been really good for NetApp. Now their trick is to get the rest of the world to know about it. Uh, let's take a look here too. We've got a, uh, a couple slides pulled up and I want to highlight overall some of the, uh, the, the features that we just talked through. So to Kevin, your point, block and file, single system, HA, 2U chassis, um, the, uh, the effective capacities there are noted as you look at the drive configurations. What did we end up with on this one? 12 drives? Yeah, so we have a 12960 config, so that gives us... Um 
probably uh, it's the 24 if we're counting up uh, yeah. incrementally there and with this uh, it is important to note that this uh, that effective capacity is based on the internal drive count if you expand it with a uh, cloud tier for example you can push up beyond that and we'll look at that in uh, within on tap uh, network configurations you were talking about that as well yeah so file only that is uh, Ethernet if you want the uh, file and block you can go for um, the more unified architecture or the uh, UTA ports, which will give you either um, Ethernet or fiber channel support. Okay, and they have the uh, NetApp volume encryption uh, enabled as well, which is which is cool. And as noted on tap uh, six nine six GA or above, we ran nine seven, and this will support future versions, of course, as well. So it's not held back there either. Uh, internal, we took a look at the controllers just a moment ago. Uh, what stands out here, Kevin, in terms of the the two options up for I/O? Well, I mean, the big thing to understand is you need to figure out which path you're going to take initially, since it does change the controller that's being used or the uh, the backplane for that controller. So make your decision, choose your uh, path wisely. Although, if you go for the um, the non irj 45 model, you can do fiber channel or Ethernet. So I kind of like that one. Okay. And talking about where this sits in the family, we mentioned coming in that it sits you know, below the A series. Um, it's just the en new entry storage that hits the bottom of their uh, their price floor. Uh, but the performance and scalability, it's not bad. And they, NetApp probably should have cheated this thing over to the right a little bit. It, it works really well. I mean, you're going to find areas where, yes, you can top it out if you're going to really stress it. But if you look at that compared to where you're going to find other competing low-cost platforms, I mean, this does a really good job. Yeah, and we've had the A800 in, and we've reviewed that. And so it's this isn't that, obviously. It's at the, uh, the other end of the spectrum. But for the enterprise that's running something like the 700 or 800 in their, uh, in their core data center, having the, the 190 out in the field or you know, a, a lower-end A, A200 series gives you that same management uh, throughout the stack, which is nice for uh, storage admins. Yeah. Uh, to your point before, you were talking about cloud tiering, and like I said, we'll look at that uh, a little bit when we do the tour of ONTAP, but this takes your C190 that's capped on its theoretical capacity and takes it to relatively infinite capacity. Well, not infinite, but it, get, it allows you to- The cloud some... is infinity and beyond, right? Yes, but it depends on your license All size. Right. Uh, but there are a lot of ways where uh, it allows you to offload snapshots or other uh, other cold data that uh, you don't really want clogging up your all-flash array. And incidentally, NetApp's been doing some promotions I've seen online with, uh, I think, GCP, uh, where they're, they're giving away some, some licenses there for a period of time. So they're making it very easy for people to go play with that functionality and see if they like it. Yeah. So when we look at performance, why don't you set the tone for, for how you tested this? And just to, as a reset, we, we had the uh, 12 drive configuration on this, so half populated. Yeah, so we approached this uh, the same way that we would test any other uh, storage array. So we look at its application performance with uh, Sysbench, uh, MySQL, uh, SQL Server, uh, and our uh, synthetic benchmarks. And we don't really hold out anything on this, so it's a we run it like we would on any other array. And in this in this sense, uh, for Sysbench, for example, we ran it at a eight VM load. Normally, we would do uh, like eight or sixteen or thirty two, depending on what the controllers can support. In this area, we were able to um, uh, top it out with uh, eight VMs at just under eight thousand transactions per, uh, per second, and this does pretty well. It's important to note where. Uh, the performance that you find on all the uh, current NetApp arrays, we're testing this with inline dedupe, inline compression, background uh, data reduction, all those features enabled. So we're not disabling and testing both with and without DR. This is with everything in place, and performance is really, really good. Okay. On the uh, sequential uh, performance, you're going to see around 4 gigabytes a second, and that is fairly impressive for an affordable uh, uh, flash array. Sure. So once you're right, this is uh, a little bit lower, only 1.4 gigabytes a second. But again, I mean, this is with data reduction enabled, which usually like kneecaps a lot of the uh, storage arrays once that's uh, turned on. You're right. And you got to remember where these are going to entry storage. So it's going to go into professional offices that want serious storage for their operations or uh, maybe even retail to support uh, POS or security systems or whatever. So 
you know, it needs it needs to be pretty good. And this so far looks like it's meeting that uh, meeting that threshold pretty easily. Yeah, and I mean, it, this is good enough where uh, you probably going to start finding these outside of just retail. But think of uh, the areas where maybe Test Dev needs a, a platform where the exact same features are going to find on the larger uh, NAP arrays, but it's islanded off. And you don't have to worry about them like thrashing one of the bigger arrays. Well, sure, you could replicate from one to this one, have your current working data set beat beat it up, and still be using the same platforms. Yeah. So on the uh, random performance, we came out at uh, just a bit over a quarter million IOPS, which is very nice when you consider, again, data reduction is on. Um, random write performance, this is going to come in lower than what we've seen other NAP arrays, but it's 12 SSDs and their entry uh, flash model. So this is going to give you above 70,000 IOPS uh, 4K random write uh, in, um, you could say, worst case scenario. Okay. So in terms of... Uh the performance profile, it's pretty robust for what it is. It's all flash, so you get all the upside of the, the flash benefits. Probably we should maybe think about reassembling this, get it in the rack, and take a look at ONTAP just yeah, to show a little, a little tour. Bit, a little bit louder than what we'd want in this room. <laughs> it is a little loud for the <laughs> conference room. So we'll put this back together, throw it in the rack, and keep going. All right, so we've got the C190 back in the rack, and for anyone familiar with NetApp systems, the ONTAP uh, interface will look very familiar. Uh, there's nothing super special about how this works on the C190, but we wanted to take a, a little tour and look at some of the highlights, and I think this is important uh, for a couple reasons. One, we're running ONTAP 9.7, so the, the current version of ONTAP 9.8 will be uh, around the corner, which this will also support. But one of the big hooks here with the C190 is the management, manageability, and all the data services. So what are we looking at here, Kevin? So this is the uh, new ONTAP dashboard. Since it is running uh, version 9.7 P6, uh, you can still roll back to the, uh, or not necessarily roll back, but you can just load in the, um, uh, the old interface if you need it. Some sort of masochist, or why would you do that? Um, there are certain features that haven't been brought forward, or if you're familiar with the old platform uh, and we're still adjusting, certain things get moved around. But for the the novice on the ONTAP platform, there are a lot of cool things brought forward in the new interface. For the guys that are, are holding on to the old interface, what's the average beard length for someone like that, would you say? Probably greater than one inch. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're looking at the the modern 9.7 interface. Yeah, and one of the cool things you get with ONTAP that uh, you're probably not gonna find on a lot of the other budget fla uh, platforms, cloud tiering. I mean, there are every single feature that you can do on a, uh, a larger ONTAP platform, you can do on this, including tiering off to Amazon or Azure or other services. You need the appropriate license for that, but you can do that to extend the capacity. So you're not just, even though this platform, you can't expand it, uh, you can expand into the cloud to increase well, your capacity. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. We brought that up in the written review too, right? Is that if you've got a, a chassis that's limited to those 24 drives, even though, as we said earlier, your effective uh, compressed capacity could be up to 55 terabytes, depending on workload and what you're doing, that's still 55 terabytes. And if you're growing at the edge more than you might expect, then being able to connect off to one of your uh, favorite cloud providers to tear out cold data is pretty pretty good deal. Yeah, and it is important to remember it's not just compression, it's deduplication. It's right. inline and background. Right. Which you're not going to find on a lot of the other platforms in this budget range. I mean, we've seen other um, other systems where uh, you're stuck with either um, block only or file only. I mean, this gives you a nice unified storage platform. So, what else stands out to you in the in the UI that you want to highlight? It's just really easy to roll through everything. I mean, you have very quick access into seeing what your fiber channel port status is. Uh, you can create uh, new LUNs. The LUNs, uh, in this process, um, you create a LUN and it'll create its corresponding volume that'll sit on. But I mean, everything is just quick and easy to hit. And you can do this from really a tablet if you wanted to. There's not, everything is nice HTML5 and really easy to look at. And when you roll back to like the dashboard, you get to see historical data stats, which this is a thing that uh, it was new in on, uh, the newest version of ONTAP where you got this uh, historical performance view where in the past to look at uh, data that wasn't in real time, you had to use another, uh, like a third party uh, utility to collect that and present that data. 
Yeah, I kind of like the uh, network view there and even just the capacity view. Basic stuff, but just helpful to, to visualize what you're dealing with. Yeah, but you, you have a lot of interface uh, capabilities here. Here you can see you can pop uh, failovers between uh, both nodes. On the setting sides, you can uh, handle and push uh, firmware updates uh, through the interface now, which before you need to mount it on a SIF share, an FS share, that sort of thing. Now you can do updates through the uh, the web GUI. So there's er, you can load the files to the web GUI. Sure. But there's a lot of cool things where it really anything that you need to do, including a ton of CLI tools where um, you have that knowledge base, which goes back to some of the earliest ONTAP versions where you're not stuck with the platform that uh, your the neck beards in the sysadmin area wouldn't understand. You can do literally anything. You'd be a storage ninja on this one. <laughs> it just supports everything that you're going to find on other uh, on tap platforms. Well, which is good too, because we think about this from an entry storage perspective as maybe a one off, and we know from NetApp that they're getting a lot of net new customers with this uh, platform through the channel. But if you're in a distributed enterprise where you've got on tap in the data center, and then a bunch of, uh, you know, I don't know, retail stores or, or professional offices that you're managing, having the same platform makes a lot of sense rather than something specialized at the, uh, at the edge there. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's that similarity which makes it a, probably, I'd say almost a nicer solution than going to a tier two platform where it might not be as integrated into your uh, data center. Somehow you've lost yourself here. I know you don't really profess the uh, benefits of data protection and snapshots. I actually use snapshots a lot. I destroy <laughs> everything in the lab. And uh, usually it comes back to uh, rolling in an earlier snap or an earlier fire, uh, file revision. So we took a look at the, uh, the interface. We've gone over the hardware. You've seen the numbers. And in the entry storage space, this is a really nice platform. And the thing is, in my mind, that stands out is that when we look at, at the sub $25,000 price band, which is sort of how we define entry storage, there's a lot of stuff there. You've got high-end NAS from, you know, like your Synology, QNAP, even OsteoStore, those guys that are making rack mount NAS. Uh, you've got things like TrueNAS that you could put on uh, IX or whatever hardware you want. A lot of software to find, a lot of other choices. Dell and HPE both sell uh, the uh, the the dot hill the seagate controllers so that's another option at this price point but this is just really strong and really easy to use and at sub 20k where you can start with this for all flash it's a pretty pretty good deal yeah i mean you there aren't a lot of compromises here usually we've seen things where you're stuck with block only or high performance on the block side but you're stuck with a you want it uh, cost effective, you want high performance, it's that type of thing where it's like, you want three things, but you gotta pick two. And this right. one really gives you all those options and adds on data protection, adds on the uh, deduplication, data reduction, all these cool things where, I mean, it's nice to have them and it really helps benefit um, a lot of environments where you can help extend that capacity into ways that uh, the other solutions might not give you. And all the data services and all the stuff with ONTAP that's been around for, you know, kind of forever Decades. at this <laughs> point, right? And the future updates and everything else that comes with that. So there's a reason uh, where even though you give up the expansion ability of the unit itself, if you need to, you can go to the A200 family, uh, which has... Uh, a number of units we're actually running the a200 in our lab yeah it's been pretty good that we uh, forgot to send back after we reviewed it and that's okay <laughs> for us yeah. um, but the c190 for its part really strong it's it's um, a great value with all the enterprise data services and that's why we gave it uh, an editor's choice uh, this year and one of only a handful we've given out in the entire year uh, so we're we're real happy with it and uh, we think uh, the edge and remote use cases will too yeah all right thanks for tuning in